couple of cats and he's got this cat tree that he bought when he first got them. They, they've loved the heck out of it. Uh, but you can see it's definitely getting worn down after they've gotten through that kitty stage. And now it's time to maybe have them graduate to something a little nicer. Mo can't be here. He's up at his cabin playing with his grandkids. You know what that means. Okay, so the idea is to build a structure with some scratching posts on the left and the right side of this sliding glass door. And then like a catwalk over the top with a bridge. This house overlooks the golf course and a nice little creek out there and the cats really enjoy looking out at squirrels and rabbits and whatnot. So you're going to need some materials. I like these nine and a half by one inch by eight foot long boards for the catwalk. Uh, they're made out of pine. They're easy to sand. And then some four by fours. This is just stud rate Douglas fir four by fours. A couple of these in the eight foot size and furring. I love furring. Uh, this is a two by one. I pick up as much as I can today. I picked up three or four of these and they're eight foot long. Also grab some wood glue, some screws, and a couple of small shelf brackets. After you've cut down the lumber to fit your specific place, now what you're going to want to do is sand it all down. So let's get some sandpaper on there and polish it up nice. I like to put some trim pieces on the top and the bottom. These are optional, but they really make it look nice. Put a healthy dose of glue on there. I'll pre-drill the holes on the inside and then just run a single screw right down the middle and we'll get after those shelves. I like these little clamps like this. They move up and down. Squeeze that to move them down. Clamp it on here. And then squish. Super solid. I like these. I'm using this piece here as a template rather than that big tall one. All right, now we're gonna now we're gonna go put some sandpaper on these, polish them up, get them ready for staining. Okay. okay, now as we've cut this out around the box, we want a shelf protruding out. So I put this bracket on the back. This is what we're going to use to mount to the wall, and then this shelf will slide right on, and then we can tack it in place. And I also use some wood glue underneath there. I've secured that on both of them. Now, if you take a look at this one. This one, we're going to move the shelf the other direction. It'll be going this way. I like to pre-drill holes whenever I'm putting screws in furring. Because if you don't, that just promotes a problem of wood splitting. We've already pre-marked our bracket. And I like to use a speed square. Run it on here. And that gets it level. Now we give it a test and fits like a glove. We want to mount this up on top. What's going to happen is this is going to hold this straight and then we'll put some holes in the side and that's going to help mount it onto the wall and secure it. It will be sitting on top of the posts uh, and then this will keep it secure to the wall. I'm using a very small screw. These are self tapping at the sides of that. It's all it needs to do is go through and then attach to the bottom. We get too big of a screw, we chance splitting that board. Okay. Now that we've got all the screws bracketed in, the byproduct has been that this has now straightened out this board. Okay, now I'm down to sanding the shelves, but I do have uh, these edges are a little bit sharp. That's kind of a look, mid-century or something like that. Uh, but I'm going to need to soften them a little bit. I still want them to have kind of a sharp look to them just for the decor of the home. But I want them to be a little bit softer because I think those kitties would appreciate uh, not rubbing their legs against anything sharp. So we're going to take the edge off of there, sand these down nicely. so. We should be about ready to start the staining. We'll put some conditioner on that. I'll talk about that in a little bit. Now, before we stain our wood, I highly recommend that you use a pre-stain or a wood conditioner. I like the Minwax brand. It's very consistent, and easy to work with. What conditioner does is it allows us to eliminate those 
high and low spots or those streaks or blotchy areas when we're staining. So you don't get areas that are too dark or too light. It smooths that out. It's particularly important when you're using different types of woods, like here we're using pine and Douglas fir. And, uh, and it just gives you a more consistent product. You basically put it on, you wipe it off, you let it dry a little longer, and then you can get into staining. We'll be using a wood stain called Kona, which is a, kind of a favorite of mine. It's a darker stain. I got about a half a can left over from another project. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and put that on there. It dries very quickly. I like it because it's dark. We put it on and almost wipe it off almost immediately. So we just put a little bit of stain on there. This can of stain's getting a little bit old, so the stain's a little bit thick, but it's actually kind of nice to work with. So uh, we'll probably need to work quickly so it doesn't dry. Wipe it off. It'll give it just that look that we're looking for. Okay, so we're really making some good headway. Our staining is complete, and now it's time to start looking at these uprights and trying to make kind of a cat scratcher out of it. So I'm gonna be using some sisal rope. Sisal rope, I think it's made from like the agave plant or something, but it's pet friendly, natural fibers. It doesn't fray too much, so the cats can scratch on it, and they seem to like it. Sorts and put a first staple or two at the bottom, and then smear some glue on there. Uh, you don't really need to glue glue all the way around, but I do like to do it on one side wrap it up and you can see how that glue goes right in there and that'll help tighten it in especially if you add a staple or two as you go along the tighter it is the better for those cats to be scratching on it then just snip off that last little piece now it's time to install the post the wall feature actually makes a nice backdrop for this post it almost looks like a tree so first thing we're doing is making sure that it's level and with those shelving brackets already in place we're just going to go ahead and tack it nails and that'll be good until later we'll secure it a little more solid with some screws and now we repeat the same thing on the left side making sure that it's level vertically and that the shelf bracket is also level and secure it And the next thing we do is slide this upper shelf in place. All right, we do have that runner on top, so we'll secure the ends and then we'll raise it up and secure it against the wall and make sure it's level. With the structure complete, we thought it might be a fun idea to repurpose some of the good pieces off the old cat condo onto this new one and to help make it a little bit more comfortable for our cats to transition. Next, we need to install the shelf. I put a little bracket on the back here so we can adhere it to the wall. It slides in place. We'll put a level on that and fasten it right up. The final step is to strengthen the platforms with some shelving brackets. I like to use these little metal ones. I pick them up at my local Ace Hardware store and they're only a couple of bucks. They screw right in place and they work just dandy. When the cats jump down, it's very stable and very solid. For more off-grid projects, home and auto do-it-yourself projects, and survival tips, please subscribe to our channel, T and Mo Off The Grid. Yes, baby!